Something that frustrates me more than anything is the way that society looks at money. As a kid, you grow up looking at big houses, fancy cars, you know, BMWs, Audis, Mercedes, Lamborghinis even. You see expensive clothes and expensive shoes and you think one thing, money. You think to yourself, they have all these nice things. They must have money. On the other hand, people see smaller houses, inexpensive clothing, not so fancy cars. Matter of fact, they're used cars and they associate that with not having money at all. Some would even go as far to say that those things would make somebody broke. And guess what? That is completely wrong. I'm here to tell you that the wealthiest people that I know have similar mindsets and similar spending habits, and they are the exact opposite of what most people would think. You see, there's a difference between rich spending money and poor spending money. Actually, I can sum it up in one word irony but that will make for a very short and unclear video so i'm going to show you the exact differences right now first off the difference between how the rich and the poor spend their money is a difference between mindset the rich buy in terms of functionality and the poor buy in terms of keeping up with appearances for example if we're talking about buying clothing and shoes the rich won't buy several different clothing items over and over and over again they won't concern themselves with designer clothes just to flex on somebody and despite being rich, they really don't spend much money on clothing items at all because they understand the functionality of clothing. They understand that clothes have a purpose and as long as they fit them nice and as long as it looks pretty good, that's really all they need. They don't need a special logo or any type of validation from others just because of the type of logo they have on their shirts. They genuinely just don't care what people think. Whereas the poor focus on specific brands and they wear designer shirts, designer jeans, and they wear these super expensive shoes and Gucci belts all while they fail to realize that these clothing items that were so expensive have the exact same functionality of any other clothes and that is to cover your back and I'm sure you've seen the diagram right here this this is real news right here this is legitimately how it is I know several people who walk around dressed like this but they don't have a dollar to their name you see what I'm saying? And that right there is one difference between the mindset. You could also say the same exact thing about cars. The purpose of a car is to take you from point A to point B, both reliably and safely. Yet, you see people buying cars that they frankly can't afford just because they're seen as luxury cars. And they come with ridiculous car payments. And honestly, a lot of people who have these types of cars are behind on these payments. That or they're literally just getting by. That's why you'll see wealthy people driving modest economy cars with great gas mileage and more times than not they'll be driving a used car that they bought in cash and that equals zero car payments whatsoever so they save on car payment you also have to factor in the fact that they they also save on maintenance costs like oil changes for a bmw is through the roof compared to what it is for like a toyota for example not to mention you get to save on insurance not to mention you get to save on gas and there's a bunch of other items for a car that you're saving money on just by simply by owning a less expensive vehicle. And again, here we're talking about functionality. The rich are not concerned with what people think of them. They're not concerned with impressing anyone. As long as the car is reliable, safe, and it gets them to where they need to go, that is all they need. With this significant difference in money mindset, the rich inevitably save a lot more than the poor. And that's just how it is. And Ironically, those who are trying to keep up appearances and show everybody how much they have and everything are the very ones who are living paycheck to paycheck. And they're the ones who have to make the sacrifices that no one knows about in order to keep their expensive items. And with that said, rich people save a lot more money purely because of their financial decisions. On average, they save about $2,000 per month more than a poor person. And it's because they don't concern themselves with appearances or impressing anybody. You know, when you look at a rich person's house versus a poor person's house, the poor person is going to look for how much can I cash out on? How big can, can my house get? You know, and then the, the rich person is going to be like, well, okay, I understand how the house market works. I understand what it means to have too much house in terms of price, in terms of size. I know that having a house that is too big, that's more air, that's more area for things to go wrong in. That's more area for something to break in. That's more potential maintenance costs. That's more areas to heat and cool. That's more areas for water to go to. They also understand that having a really, really, really big house can be very expensive. And they're not in the business of putting themselves in financial situations that are hard to get out of. What they do is they find ways 
to make their money make more money for them. So a rich person would buy a relatively cheap house that isn't very big at all, rent it out, pay it off, buy more property, stuff like that. Continue the process, rinse and repeat, whereas the poor person is just gonna buy a big $700,000 house just so they can flex on everybody and not rent anything out and struggle and then you know and continue to put on this facade that they have money but then behind closed doors they're like woe is me what do i do i'm in a situation that i can't get out of so between the housing and car payments alone that's why the rich people are able to save so much more per month than someone who isn't and what do you think they do with this money well i kind of just said it but they spend money on assets, which bring them more money. And this could be in the form of stocks, bonds, real estate, education, just to name a few. And like I said, these assets bring more money. So when a stock or bond brings them more money, what do you think they do with that? They take that money and they reinvest it into the machine that produced that money in the first place, only making them more and more money instead of buying it on something that isn't gonna make them a cent. The same thing with real estate, exact same thing. Same thing with education. They wanna learn a skill to make more money, they learn that skill, boom. They have that skill, cool. Now I'm gonna spend more money on that same exact skill and become more advanced and specialized in that skill, boom, even more money. If I want to, I can keep investing in that or I can do the second thing that rich people do with their money. And that's this, whenever an asset is producing a money amount that is becoming substantial, they can then buy themselves luxury items through that asset that's generating that income. So instead of paying out of pocket, they're letting their assets work for them, their stocks, their bonds. If they've been doing it for 20, 30 years, boom, that they could have a million dollars in that account and that could be producing them 50, $60,000 a year if they want to. So if they, if they then want to buy themselves a brand new car in cash, okay, cool, they can do that. And it won't hurt anything. It won't even affect the principal, especially if they just wanted to spend 50 grand just flat, they could get them a very nice car for that amount of money, not affect the principal at all, which is, would be a million dollars in this case, and it would still continue to bring the same type of cash flow. Do you get the idea? I mean, there's a whole different thought process with this. It's understanding that money can actually work for you, so you should use it wisely and not making it to where you're the one who's working for your money because there's a difference between having money and money having you. And you can clearly see which one is which in this scenario. When you see rich people with luxury items, I can guarantee you that they've thought long and hard about it and I can guarantee you that they've let their assets do it instead of letting their primary streams of income do it for them. Now, now keep in mind, when I say assets, I'm not even talking about their primary stream of income. And that could be, in their case, it could be a job, or in that case, it could be a business. I'm talking about their assets outside of their main forms of making their income. They're letting those assets pay for those, uh, for those luxury items. Whereas poor people, whenever they make or save extra money, they tend to just buy liabilities and they take money away from them. For, for example, whenever people get their tax refunds and everyone gets all excited, guess what they do? They go and splurge on something. They go and buy a brand new TV that costs $700. That's not gonna, that's not gonna make them any money. They'll go out and buy all these fancy clothes and really expensive shoes. That's not gonna make them any money. They'll go out to eat at really fancy restaurants and they'll live a lavish life for maybe a month or two. And guess what? That's not going to make them any money. It's just gonna make them feel like they're rich and look like they're rich when they're really not. And it's going to be very apparent when it comes to an abrupt end when they run out of money. Another example would be the $1,200 stimulus check that most people got. As you saw, it was here today and gone tomorrow, meaning a lot of people just kind of burn through it and instead of putting it in their savings or instead of investing it or instead of just sitting and calculating what to do with it, people just said, oh, this is an extra $1,200. And yes, it was an extra $1,200, but guess what? In the time of an uncertainty like this, you don't just splurge. So people were ordering stuff from Amazon and getting all of these crazy miscellaneous things when they didn't need to. These things are not gonna generate them income. A lot of people didn't even think about buying assets with this extra $1,200. They only thought about, how can I entertain myself more? Which gaming console can I buy? What laptop can I buy? What shoes can I buy? You shouldn't think like that. 
when it comes to extra money. And that's, that's again, what I'm talking about is clearly a mindset shift that needs to take place to stop this from happening. Now, in the short term, splurging any extra money that you get throughout the year results in owning really nice things, but it also results in zero dollars going into your pocket, which is pretty bad. And the reason this frustrates me to absolutely no end is because this is the very behavior that leads to statements like this. I need a raise, I need to make more money, I need to work overtime for the next six months. And it breeds an endless cycle of making money, spending money, being broke. Making money, spending money, being broke. That's a problem. But then then they'll get the raise. Oh, they're, they're gonna get the raise eventually. And when they do, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna give in to lifestyle inflation. They're going to increase their living expenses to match their salary. That's what they're gonna do. They're going to get a bigger house, a bigger apartment, you know, a bigger, nicer, fancier car. They're going to eat out more often. They're going to take the family on vacations more often. They're going to upgrade their entire lifestyle. And I'm sorry, there's no other way to say this. That is stupid. And that is why they call it the rat race, because no matter how fast you're going, you're not actually getting anywhere and you're definitely not getting ahead financially. Answer this for me. What's the point of making more money if you're just going to bring your expenses up to the point of matching your income so now you're in the same exact situation you were in before and guess what you're gonna end up saying at the end of that? I need to make more money. I need to work overtime for six more months, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So if you kept your expenses the same while your salary went up, you get to save more money. I mean, if you start off here, right? And you say, I need to make more money. Okay, these are your expenses and this is you. I need to make more money. Okay, boom, your salary goes up. Okay, cool. If you keep it right here, then you get to save this much money. But if you bring your expenses up to match your income, well, now all of a sudden, I need to make more money. And that's just complete BS and it's so freaking stupid to me. Keep in mind, while they're upgrading their entire lifestyle to match their income, keep in mind, they're also buying clothes every week, they're also eating out every week, and they're also paying off debt while they're doing this. So they're really digging themselves even deeper in a financial hole. And this is just, statistically speaking, this isn't stuff that I'm just making up off the top of my head. This is legit how people act. I'm not even kidding. But this is exactly why I make videos like how to stop caring what people think. This is why I make videos about how to grow thicker skin, how to become more confident. It's because these are key things that pour over into your finance sector. Because if you're not confident within yourself, if you don't have thick skin, and if you care about what people think, then you're just gonna let what people think of you make you melt and conform to what they do and you won't be able to reach your financial potential because when people ask you why don't you buy a house why haven't you gotten a house yet and then you break down and buy a house you cared too much about what people thought of you and that's why this is a personal growth and personal finance channel because to me they go hand in hand but the the mindset of the funny thing is though the mindset of caring so much about what people think that even pours over to education because in my mind i've always wondered this why would you spend so much money? Why would you go into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt just to go to the best, you know, the most well-known school there is to get the same degree that yields the same exact results as any other educational institution? Why? And you could argue, you know, well, if you go to a better school, if you go to a well-known school for this degree, you'll make more. Okay, let's say you make 10,000 more a year because you went to a better school. Was it worth going 60,000 extra dollars in debt? I don't think so, because last time I checked, that will take far longer to pay off than the former, which means you're not financially better off. In fact, you're even worse off than the person who's technically making less than you. And it's, it's not even really a proven thing that if you go to a certain school that you're gonna definitely get paid more. But to wrap up this video, it's really the, the difference between the rich and the poor. And I mean, probably wondering rich and the poor, there's more than just rich, poor, there's middle class. Well, yeah, but 
I'm not talking about so much as from a financial standpoint. I'm talking about purely from a mindset standpoint because the reason the rich get richer is because of their mindset. They have a rich person's mindset. That's why before rich people even have money, they were already rich up here and that's what produced those results. Uh, similarly, poor people, they may have money. They may have a good job. Some doctors are poor. You know what I'm saying? But it's the mindset that keeps them poor. It's the mindset of, yeah, I know I'm half a million dollars in debt, but I'm going to buy a gigantic house and drive a really fancy car to flex on people to make it look like I have money. That is a poor mindset. Instead of living a modest lifestyle until you can pay off that half million dollars in debt and then get ahead financially and then buy properties and invest and do whatever you want to do then, that's how a rich person thinks. And the, the biggest the biggest separation is purely just mindset. And that's really what I want you guys to get out of this entire video because I can't stress enough just how frustrating it is because people are like, oh man, did you see that car? This person's got some money. And then I always think to myself, yeah, well, I don't know about all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyways, that wraps up this video for today. Thank you so much for watching. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance. My name is Reggie Bryant. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing. Check out some of my other videos. They're on similar topics, but they also go in depth on how to save, how to budget, how to invest, you know, basic financial principles that can make your life a lot better and honestly change your entire life if you haven't been exposed to these types of videos or information in your life. So check them out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.